G'day Spurs fans, Paul the Hotspur Hippie here, the only psychedelic soccer show on the internet. I hope you're I hope you're all well. It's time for Predictathon 2024. I'm so tempted to say just Predictathon 2000 because it sounds space age and new, but everyone's doing it. Everyone's doing it. I got a couple of these categories. I must admit, I pinched them off the Irish Hotspur. It's all right, folks. I know for all you intellectual property uh, law buffs out there, you all realise you're all on the same page as me that uh, IP law only covers the expression of a, an idea, not the idea itself. So Irish Hotspur had the idea for some categories. I've stolen that idea and I'm expressing it in my own way. So hopefully we'll be all right. Um, now, before I get on to my predictions, there's a chance for people watching to enjoy the fun. I've set up this, which is just a, predi um, it's a, a predicting the scores competition. I'm not going to call it a tipping competition because I don't like gambling. It's just who knows more about football than anyone else. So if you go to the website, predictthefootball.com, and you join up, it's all free. You don't even have to put a real email address in there. And you put in the uh, competition code 534030. Welcome aboard. You can uh, you can have the delights of uh, kicking my backside every week for a start. Because, whoa, pressed the wrong button there. That's the one I want to do. So even when I'm recording these things, I'm rubbish. Rubbish. <laughs> There's some showbiz for you. That'll keep them watching. Right now, so... Just a few categories, because there's not much point in me doing a lot of these predictions, because I'm just going to say Spurs wins everything. That's what, I can't help myself. I can't. I don't care if I'm wrong and look silly at the end of the year. It's just what I do. It's just what I do. So um, I'm, I picked a, a couple of different categories, mainly from Irish Hotspur, but we've, dis we've already dis addressed the legal aspects of that. Uh, so most improved player for this year. Now, this was a hard one. Because um, on the one hand, I'm thinking Jed Spence, maybe. But you know what? I've got faith in this guy. I know there's not a lot of faith out there for this guy. Um, he's been slagged off left, right and centre, actually. But I think there's a player in there. He does the hard bit. If he gets the easy bit right, which I think he might do this year, then our most improved player will surely be Brennan Johnson. There he is, up there in the corner, point in the right direction. Brennan Johnson, yeah, I've got hopes for him. I've got hopes for him, particularly now that we've got a proper centre forward in the middle in the shape of Dominic Solanke. I think I think this could be a year that uh, that uh, brings J Johnson right up there again, right up there again. I'm used to, you know, we, we were a bit spoilt at the beginning of the year when so many players seemed to mesh so quickly. And players don't often do that, or don't often, but sometimes don't do that. I've got faith in this kid. I think Brennan Johnson's going to have a hell of a year. Clip it and make me look silly in May if I'm wrong. Now, I've got some sackings predictions for you. Ange is not one of them. I think Ange is going to be here all year because there's going to be no alternative but to keep him about. Keep him about. So the rogues gallery of sackings... And there might be a bit of uh, bit of booing there, and I don't know, man. Oh, oh look at this! Look at these horrible people. Oh, so number one, number one, number one has got to be the Chelsea guy, whoever that may be, because he might have been sacked already. So I'm just going to put the Chelsea guy. Todd Bowley has shown that he has got not a clue about football. It's brilliant. I love it. He's sending Chelsea straight back down to where they belong. Division 2, Division 2, not League A, but 2. So that's good. Eric Ten Hag, I think he's been on borrow time. I know I know the uh, the news about contracts and extensions and all this sort of stuff, but I've you know, when you get a new ego into the building in the shape of uh, Jim Radcliffe, Radcliffe, they're going to want their own man in there just so they can say, I told you so. So Eric Ten Hag is gone. And number three, it's got to be Lego Head. Oh, 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 oh. Lego Head from Twats FC in Plumstead. 
I think he's just run out of stories. He's run out of stories. He's run out of things to do. You know, he burnt his best story, which I think was uh, was about how he thought he was going to, like, maybe not survive his childhood. He blew his wad on that one. He used it for a game against Norwich. It wasn't like a Champions League Cup final or anything like that. It's like, oh, oh, lads, this game we're facing today reminds me of the hardest thing I faced in all my life as a child. It's like, no, it's Norwich. So Lego Head has certainly gone as well. And uh, it's going to be a shame. It's going to be a shame because I think he's a fraud and Arsenal are a fraud. Now, now we've got some cut predictions coming up here. Cut predictions. I might be a little bit biased here, but, um, you know, what, what What can I say, man? What can I say? You know, that's uh, it's just the way it is. It's a Tottenham, it's a Tottenham uh, fan channel, this. It's not, not Brentford or anyone like that. So here we go. Let's have a look at the cup. So, of course, Premier League, numero uno, Tottenham Hotspur. I said it last year. I did predictions last year. I said Spurs are going to win this the league this year. I can't back down and look. I can't. I can't look silly now. I've got to stick by my convictions and say Spurs, Premier League champions. And FA Cup, Spurs as well. Now, I've been... I don't want to be greedy. I think we will win all four, but I thought I'd mix it up a bit by saying the League Cup will go to Leeds United. Give them something, give them something. Of course, the UEFA Cup, as we used to know and love it, now called the Europa League, um, is going to be Spurs as well. I think we've, uh, out of the, all of them, I think that one we've got a really good chance of the, the UEFA Cup. That's good. Champions League, I don't care because Spurs not in it, so I just stuck down PSG. And Euro Disney League, the conference thing, long. Because uh, they might get through to it and we'll see how we go. Not really that interested in it, to be honest. Now, best young player. This is such a hard fought category. That I might have forgotten whose picture I've pre-selected. Yes, I know I remember. Now, there's there's a whole gamut of, of players. Archie Gray, Lucas Bergvall, Mikey Moore, maybe even Will Lankshire if he comes up and starts kicking goals in. But for me, it's the uh, half teenager, half Tonka truck. That's the wrong button. Mikey Moore. I think he's going to have a hell of a season. Now, I only watched him a few times in um, in the academy games, but there was one game I saw, man. He was doing Glenn Hoddle type stuff. I know it's against kids, but it was just the touch. Did a beautiful through ball from a free kick with the outside of his foot. He's got a good football brain, this kid. That's what counts. Good football brain. And it sounds like his family are all Spurs fans as well. So Mikey Moore, I think, is going to have a hell of a year for Tottenham. Maybe in the same position that uh, Brennan Johnson is. So, hey, maybe Brennan Johnson. It's not most, It's not going to make sense, any of this. not going to make sense. Going to contradict this. It's not a democracy. It's a hotspur hypocrisy. That's what it is here. <laughs> But I think he's good. I think he's got the goods. I think he's the real deal. Now, top four. Oh, who will I put at the top of this? Well, here we go. It's got to be Tottenham Hotspur at number one. I'm giving Arsenal number two because I think it's pretty hard to pick a number two this season. Now, the reason Manchester City are not in here is because they've got their their uh, their festering court hearing coming up. I think it's been scheduled for September. There's going to be a... Uh, a, a decision by the end of the year. I think Manchester City are gone. I think they're going to get relegated. I think the knives are out for them and there's nothing they can do about it. So they do not figure in my top four. Liverpool, I think there may be some promising signs under Arna Slot, but I don't know. I don't think they're going to be challenging anyone. <coughs> Press the button when you do cough, not after. Um, but it, it's pretty hard. I, I think it's... When you get past Tottenham Hotspur, the pride of North London, I think it's sort of slim pickings after that, isn't it? So, in essence, I don't really care who comes second, third or fourth. I'm picking Crystal Palace to, as my outside little, little not the word flutter, I don't like that, as my outside tip. I think they finished the season rather strongly and I think they're uh, they're picking up a little bit of a pace now. Here we go to Tottenham's best player of the year. And our best player, I think, he's going to be unlocked. He's going to be unlocked. He's been locked up for a little bit because we haven't had a guy in the middle to do stuff and link up with him. I think our 
best player is going to be none other than our captain, Son Jung Min. I think he's going to see what we saw two, three years ago. And that's no reflection on him last year. It just was, you know, sometimes he's playing up the middle. Sometimes he's playing up the left-hand side. And in the middle, you've got Richarlison always being offside. I think this is the year where Sonny is going to play in his preferred position. And I think he's going to remind us all of what a fantastic player he is. So, uh, Sonny, and I think we're going to see his armpits a few times this year, lifting up trophy after trophy after trophy. Yes. What it's going to be. No mistake. No mistake. The magic of football. And here's my outside prediction. As if you didn't think that uh, Tottenham winning the league would be ridiculous, delirious, delusional, stupid enough. Here we go. I think Tottenham Hotspur are going to score over 100 goals this season. Over 100. I'm basing that on the vibe. But I think Dominic Solanke is going to have a great year for us. And I think he's going to get 20 to 25 goals. And I think the rest of them are up their game a bit up front as well. So we're going to score over 100 goals. And the reason we're going to win the league is because we're going to concede loads as well. But it's going to be less than 60. It's going to be less than 60. It might be 59. Maybe our goal difference at the end of the season is going to be plus 38. But that's enough. That's enough. If we win all our games 3-2, we are the champions. We are the champions. So there's a few of my predictions this season for you now. I'll just put up that uh, predict the football thing again. Predict the predict the Premier League. There it is. Predictthefootball.com. And if you put in the code five three four zero three zero, you're uh, more than welcome to come along, play. You know, prove you're better than me. <sighs> like I care. Oh, I came about twentieth last year. That's all right. In fact, I did better in the Euros because I put the scores in before the teams were populated and I just put in random scores and I did all right. So I might do that again this year. I think if I think too hard, then it don't work out for me. Um, well, there we have it, folks. There we have it, folks. Um, let me know in the comments below. And click like and subscribe and all that sort of stuff. If, um, if you disagree with me or think I'm the biggest tosser ever to walk the footballing world, that's all fine too. In, um, I will just say until next time, folks, I will say peace and love, man, peace and love. Come on, you Spurs.